Love for people, part one. Love for people, part one. In the kingdom of God, you become easily successful when you are a lover of God. It's the eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither has entered the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love him. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. Eyes have not seen, neither ears heard. Neither has entered the heart of man the things which God has prepared for lovers of God. When you are a lover of God, you become a marvel to your world. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It has not entered the heart of man the kind of things that God has prepared for lovers. In the new covenant, Jesus speaking said, they said, which is the greatest of all commandments? Jesus said, put all of them together. That is the greatest. A young ruler came to him in Matthew chapter 22, 36 to 40. He said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. For this is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On all these two commandments hang on the law and the prophets. Shout hallelujah. You can predict the end of a lover of God and man. He is bound to end successful. And you will be successful. Let me say this to you. But for God's love to be exhibited, there has to be a love for his people. Love for God is exhibited by the love for God's people. In 1 John chapter 4, 7 to 12, I will read verse 7, you read verse 8. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. So if you don't love, you don't know God. Are you getting it clear now? You read verse 8. When you read the Bible, you understand it. He said, if you don't love, you don't know him. I know God is a lie. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. Verse 9, please. In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. You read verse 10. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. Verse 12. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Shout hallelujah. If you truly love God, it will show by the way you love people. Claiming to love God without loving people is the highest form of hypocrisy. Oh God, I love you. And you don't love people, something is wrong. It's right here. In 1 John chapter 4 and verse 20 and 21, if a man say, I love God, and hated his brother, he's a liar. Oh, I love God, and you hate your brother. You are what? A liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Oh, God knows I love him. He said, if you don't love people, you don't love me. So here. And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God, love his brother also. Shout hallelujah. May love change your story forever. How can we say we love God when we do not love the brethren that we see? Those who truly love God love God's people also. Do you love him? Do you love him? 
אוקיי. to love God if you don't love your neighbor. You avoid hatred, jealousy, envy, bitterness, and unforgiveness if you love God. If you love God's people. Has anybody ever come up to you and say, I just bought a new car and your face went down? Now, many times we think we love people, but do you know we don't celebrate people? We castigate people. Somebody just came to you, oh my God, someone has proposed to me to marry and everything you just went down. This one, I want to marry. I've been serving God all my life. So when I just come, say, well, I, God gave me twins. I just gave back to triplets. I just gave back. You say, well, I've been in church for 40 years. I just bought a new car right now. Just a new car. You say, wow. Thank God. You're laughing there, but inside you say, this devil bought a new car. I know this is a saint. I've not even bought one. You have a problem with love. 1 John 3, 15 and 18. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. <laughs> Whosoever hated what? Is a what? So it's not until you carry on to kill somebody. And you know that no murderer had eternal life abiding him. I've seen people get sick. They can't diagnose the sickness. It's when they walk in hatred. When eternal life leaves you, what will enter you? Eternal dead. Many people die untimely. You don't know what killed them. You say, leave this matter. They say, no, no, I can't, for- I can't forgive that. That man, no way. He said, who's so hated, but Abai is in dead. He said, Modra, you are gone. That's the don't how powerful love is. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. May, may the Lord change your love life from today. Yeah. And may you have the nature of God. Shout it, but amen. Yeah. Love has a nature. Love has a what? If you say I love, it will show. It, it's not mechanical. It's not something you just send test. I love you. you. Can't send somebody test. I love you, and the next moment you are so angry and so bitter with the person, you want to kill the person. No, no, no. You know, human love can turn to hatred in twenty-four hours. Somebody can say I love you, I will die with you, and the following day he say I want to kill this. I will kill him. That's human love. Those kind of love are hypocritical love. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about God's kind. So here. First Corinthians 13, we read 4 to 8. And I'm going to read the amplified version of it. We read King James and we read the amplified. But the amplified is where I want to teach from. Glory to God. It's a love endures with patience <laughs> and serenity. I took time in my studies preparing for this service. Love endures with what? Patience. Have you ever heard married people say, I've endured this marriage, I can't take it again? Have you heard people say so? I've endured this man, I can't take it again. Have you heard people say so? They don't understand love. love that endures must also be patient. Love endures with patience. People can tell you I've endured enough. I'm getting out of this marriage. I'm getting out. No, you don't understand love. Any love that only endures cannot last. It has to endure with patience. Because God himself is very patient with you. If he had not endured you and is not patient with you, he would have killed you since. The things you did even this morning before you came to church. God has been so patient with you. Till now he's patient with you. With all the nonsense. He's patient with you. True? You even abuse him as God. You say, God, all my mates, they are married. Oh. You are abusing him. Oh. I don't know what you are doing oh, if you are still God. Are you already not insulting him? Yet he did not kill you. No more. No more. 
you will take all. You will take. Now listen carefully. <laughs> if people understand love, life will be sweeter. It's a love endures with patience and what? Serenity is a state of being calm, peaceful, and unstruggled. That means while you're patient with the person, you are calm. You are not fighting the person, you're also peaceful. You are not also struggling to do it, it just flows. It's right here. You are not enduring the person and then murmuring on the inside. You are calm with the person. You take time for the person to change through a process. Because change is not automatic. It's a process. Say what? Where you are now was not where you were some years back. So, endure that person as, with love. With what? And when you connect somebody with love, do you know change is very easy? Do you know? Tell somebody with love. The person will just... But when you come up the other way with hatred, you destroy the whole thing. You don't understand love. People preach love, but don't practice love. Love, look at the next one. Love is kind. Love is what? So, while you endure, you are patient, you also have to be kind. Now listen. Yes, I've endured this, my husband, I've endured my wife, be patient. And in the prayer where you're patient, also be kind with the person. You are still not changing your attitude if you are to buy. He said, I won't buy her something again because she's not she's respecting me. Then you don't understand love. When you understand love, you are patient with her, you still be kind to her. Look, this man, I'm not going to give him food to eat anymore. I've endured him enough. While you endure him, you will be patient and you still be kind. So I hear. I was talking to a couple of recent, and I said, Lady, two things you must not deny your husband is food and sex because he owns the two. I said, No quarrel should make you to deny him food to eat and your body. She looked at me and said, yes, that's the truth. The day you do that, you don't understand love. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? No quarrel should make you not to serve your spouse food. No quarrel should make you to stop what you are supposed to do for your spouse. Both men and... Don't quarrel. And then if you are giving pocket money, you now stop. Give the pocket money. Don't say, now that I'm calling you, pocket money, stop. I pocket the money into my pocket. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. <laughs> it's a love is kind and thoughtful. You know what I mean? You think of the person. You think of what? You think of the person. And it's not jealous or envious. Are you there? Love does not brag. And it's not proud or what? Arrogant. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not provoked, not overly sensitive and easily angered. It does not take into account a wrong endured. When you hear somebody keep record, every little thing you get angry, you don't understand love. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It does not rejoice at injustice, but rejoices with the truth when right and truth prevail. Love bears all things. Regardless of what comes, believes all things, looking for the best in each other, hopes all things, remaining steadfast during difficult times. So even when things are not, listen, people don't separate in marriage because things are not working, they separate because there's no love. Our forefathers lived together with their wives when food was not there. They didn't separate. My mother fried bananas plantain, but she didn't leave my father. These days now, if a man cannot provide for one month, the woman has packed. Hello. It's because they don't understand love. It's it what? Endures. Little challenge is not enough for marriage to separate. He said, endures all things. 
in difficult what? Remaining steadfast during difficult times. Understand the Bible. Do you what? The man just lost his job. It's not enough for you to pack. Don't understand love. You fight together with him to get another job. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm going to leave this marriage. You, you don't understand love. In those other things, without weakening, you are not changing your attitude. Listen. Love never fails. You will never fail after today. Yeah. It never fails nor ends. It's not a seasonal thing. It's not a full time political appointment. It's forever. But as for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for gift of special knowledge, it will pass away. May God give you understanding. May God give you understanding. Love endures with patience and is what? Kind. Love is never envious. It's not proud. These days, the level of pride in people is so high. The husband and wife is as if they are in a competition. The women are so arrogant. The men are so arrogant. They look at you and say, ooh, 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 if not for marriage, you. This child that made you to marry me, otherwise, who are you? If I was in Egypt, you know your type? If they were there, why did you come to, to this place? You only had boyfriends, not husband. And 500 years of boyfriendship, permit me, it's not equal to one day of marriage. Did you hear what I'm saying? Five years of boyfriend, not equal to one day of what? Five years of boyfriend, you're not a missus. No matter what you got, you are still a miss. So don't brag about your past that was not glorifying. But this is people are so arrogant. Even the men too, they look at her and say, if it was in Egypt, you, how many you, you, you. You that does not even have to cook. Love endures. Love does. Yes. And it's kind. It's not touchy. It's not self-seeking. Love is not what? You don't do things only for yourself. You know when you don't walk in love, you, do you know there are men who till tomorrow cook and eat alone? Men, not women. No. By the time you want to know a man who doesn't understand love, you go to a shop, buy food and eat. Forgot his wife. Come back to this man. He doesn't understand love. There are men who go, go to buy things, not buy one thing for their wife. Only for themselves. And there are women who buy only things for themselves, not even once talking for their husbands. You don't understand love. Love is not selfish. Every selfishness in you dies today. Yeah. You don't think of somebody else, only yourself. That's not love. Love covers with silence. Love covers with what? Love covers with what? In First Peter chapter 4, verse 8. Look at what it says. Shall we do together one to go? And above all, all things have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. You know the meaning? You are not condoning sin, but you don't expose evil outside. That's the meaning. They understand the Bible. David said, publish it not. Let the Philistines rejoice over us. When love says it means even when things go wrong, you are silent about it. When you hear a man talk about his family or a woman talk, they don't understand love. When you understand love, love is silent. Love is what? It covers with silence. It says, love cover it. Multitude. My wife does not know how to cook. When she hear a man say so, he has not known the meaning of love. Okay, let me be very raw. She doesn't know how to cook. Go and hire somebody to teach her how to cook. And it's not compulsory that she must cook for you. Can't you get a chef? I told my wife to stop cooking. I put my feet down and said, nothing makes you cook again. 
I said, God has blessed me with a state you will never enter kitchen. She said, no. I said, no way, not at this level of my life. You will never cook again. I said, no way. It's poverty. Where did you hear that woman must cook till she die? Just be angry with your poverty level. And grow to the point where, where they employ chef to cook. True? You know, my wife doesn't even know how to boil the yam. You boil now, teacher. I say, my wife, come. That's what you mean by love covered a multitude of sin. Come, this is how they boil yam. You show her. And a good one will learn. Say, my husband, thank you. But not at the command side. Come, let me tell you. Do you know that woman? That woman, my mother, cannot even cook. You don't understand. Love that you will teach her and cover her weakness. She too will cover your what? Then two of you will begin to. That's what you mean by love. So I hear. Because there's no perfect person. He said, women are weaker versus There cannot be weaker if there's no weak. If women are weaker, then the men are weak. Because there cannot be weaker when there's no weak. For they are weaker versus. So the men are what? Weak versus. God knows how to speak English. Deal with them according to knowledge for their weaker vessels. So the men are the what? The weak vessels. Okay, when you were cooking before, didn't you spoil? Some of you don't even know how to cook. Don't even know how to boil yam. There are men who, <laughs> they, they can't boil rice. If they boil rice. <laughs> they will put the rice before they put water. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. Huh? Please learn to love. Learn to what? It's so simple to walk. Now, and let me say this to you. Love is already in your heart. Because as Michelle brought in your heart, now you are consciously grow because it's the fruit of the spirit. You nurture it and grow in love. You have to just grow. There are things people shout about. I look at them and I say, look. And when you wait for somebody to make mistake, that means you never loved. Let me tell you. When you walk in love and you see something wrong, you tell telling people, I don't like this you're doing. When you don't walk in love, you wait till the person makes a mistake, you not capitalize on it. You know, if you want to divorce, it's very simple. It's very simple. How? Just find fault because fault is everywhere. You can say, the way she came late, she came 10 p.m. Therefore, for a woman to come 10 p.m., she has to explain. She, I'm not going to marry. Why didn't you tell her, I don't like late out? Why did you wait? Love was not, from no time there was no love. When love is there, you even connect with love. And the person will be afraid, say, my husband does not like me keeping late nights. Nice. My wife doesn't like me doing this. Do you understand love? But when love is not there, you capitalize and hammer. The missing thing in Christian faith today is love. So I hear. How many will walk in love right now? Woo! Are you going to walk in love? Jesus demonstrated his love for God's people. They were hungry. And he looked at them and said, if I leave them to go, they will faint by the way. Remember in Mark 8, 1 to 9. He then says, love. Do you love people? How many love people? How many will love from now? Do you like sharing what you have with people? Or you only eat? Now listen. Do you know it is not what you have, the time is what you give. It is love. A lover will share the least food. And a not lover, no matter what you have, you won't share. A lover will share a plate of food as they join me to eat. A non-lover will be stingy and put it on that bed. A lover will want to give you one or two clothes. I said, take one. You are, you, the way you look, you, but a non-lover will say, I have 50 clothes. Everything a lover has, he wants to share with somebody. But the stingy ones don't share with anybody. They always think of collecting. Lovers learn to give. Stingy ones want to collect. If you're always liking to collect, you are not a lover of people. Hmm? 
I don't preach love, I practice love. From Sunday school, my provision used to finish before my classmates. As I enter school, my provision will be the first to finish because my corner, if, how many of you were in boarding school? How many of you went to boarding school? How many of you went to any boarding school? When you were in boarding school? How many of you opened biscuit from the back? <laughs> you open? Just know you are very stingy. You are very what? <laughs> and now, if you watch your life very well, look at your life, you will not be the type that likes to give people something. <laughs> people will not know we are Christians until God's love is demonstrated to us. God's love is what? How many of you are Christians? Christianity is not coming to church. It is not belonging to a denomination. You are not a Christian if you don't love. The world will not know you because you belong to salvation ministries. The world will not know you because you belong to church A, church B, church 4. The world will know you when you begin to demonstrate love towards mankind. That's what Jesus said. And I want to show you from scriptures. John 13, 34, 35. And then John 1, John 3, 18. Shall we all read this? One, two, go. A new commandment I give unto you. That ye love one another as I have loved you. That ye also love one another. When? By this shall all men know that ye are my what? Not by coming to church. Not by carrying big Bible. By this shall, if you have love for one another. So if you don't love people, you are not, forget your denomination is useless. First John 3, 18. One, two, go. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed. Rise to your feet. So I hear, how many will love? Of what use are we? Is it to carry church? I'm a deacon, I'm a pastor, I'm an apostle, I'm a bishop. Titles without love. No entitlement. Christianity today is, we think that I belong to this, I belong to this denomination. It's not denomination. It's a thereby shall they know we are disciples of Christ when we love one another. It's not, you don't fast and pray here. Put your hand here and say, Lord, love is already shared in my heart. I receive more grace to put love to practice. From today, whatever makes me walk in hatred, bitterness, and everything that does not exemplify love, take it off my heart. I want to walk in your nature, which is love, all the days of my life. 